the time has come to finally attach those defining characteristics of this masquerade dress. I can't believe we're finally here to this spot and time of completing this costume. This is the last video as well. The last video as it pertains to making the actual dress. There will be accessory video coming, but the embellishments are the final thing. Once those are made, it's, it's finished. This dress is finished. There are a lot of embellishments that really make this dress stick out and be finalized. It's not just like little details. There's a lot of major details in it that will really define the dress. And so I am so excited to finally attach those details. So the time is here to add the embellishments. So with the lace embellishment on the bodice, it became playing around with different materials to find out what really looked best for everything. Now the sleeves of the original dress definitely look fluffy and kind of poofy, and so I did a combination of the netting that I used on the skirt and then also some silk gauze. So again, I just did some playing around with it until it looked right. And there's quite a few different layers of this mixed in with the lace. And again, just playing around with it is the only way to really explain what I'm doing. With the front lace sections, I have two different types of lace. This lower piece is definitely not as sheer as the other type of lace, and so that is why I am using some netting, which will help hopefully balance out the two different types of lace. And this bottom lace, I would have chosen something different now that I think back on it. I got it a while ago and thought it would be perfect, but it wasn't absolutely as perfect as I was hoping it to be. But I wanted to just make do with what I had, and so I just played around with some different netting placement to help blend the two laces together. Now there is one major difference between the two laces. These bottom V-shaped laces are definitely a stark white, and so I decided to try to dye them with coffee, and it is polyester threads used in the lace, but I tested some and it did slightly make this lace an off-white color instead of a bright white. And with that dyeing, the two laces looked much better together and now we can go back at arranging the laces to look good. The reason I'm trimming off this top edge of the lace is to help reduce the stark look where this lace will end and the next lace begins. I don't need that extra line in the bodice. I want to really make sure this whole lace section combines and blends really well together.
So I am trimming off the top edge of this lace to not have a stark edge where the lace ends. And it's something, again, I was just playing around with this whole placement to really get it to look like it all fit together and looked like the right combination of lace and netting to replicate the original dress. But it was slightly hard considering my lace wasn't completely accurate and was definitely thicker than the original dress. But when you have a project like this, you kind of just have to play around with it with what you have to try and achieve the look you're going for. After figuring out a good technique for the front layering things I'm doing, I went onto the back and just did the same layering of netting and lace and all that. I posted a picture on Instagram. The costume designer assistant, Richard Cook, messaged me. And he mentioned that he noticed that the bodice was kind of long. And he mentioned that they really, really, really worked on getting the bodice to sit high up on the hips. So it's not actually at her waistline. They wanted it to be higher. And so he mentioned that he very much remembers having working hard at achieving that high waist. And I didn't have that because when I was replicating the bodice, I wasn't thinking make the waistline higher than my waistline. I was just thinking make it at your waistline. And then I was really focusing on making sure that the shape of the bodice was correct. So that was what I was more focusing on, not necessarily the height, because I was just thinking waistline. But with him mentioning that, and I had already finished the bodice as far as construction wise, and it was just the embellishments going on, and I did have some lace attached already. But when he commented that, I was like, well, I'm not just gonna keep moving on, even like I have the costume assistant designer, whatever, saying they really worked on this and he wasn't really seeing that in my bodice. And he was really kind about it. Don't get me wrong, he, it was great. But I was like, I'm not gonna ignore him because that's incredible. So I altered the bodice, which I didn't film any of the alteration process because when I'm altering something, I don't really wanna take the time to film it because it's kind of like, just like get it done with and move on. And taking that time to film the process was, I'm usually not in the mental state to do that. So, so I didn't capture any process of altering the bodice, but I basically just took an inch off around the, the length. I didn't quite as much in the back. And then along this, like the waist and then it dips, I went kind of up before it dips. And so it got more of like this look of being higher than a waistline and then dipping, if that makes sense. And I wish I could have gone a little bit higher, but with how my skirt is made and the waistband and it's all hemmed and everything, that would pull the skirt up higher on me and make it shorter and the skirt. So if I pulled the waistband up to match the bodice height, it would make the skirt shorter. And so I could only do so much without making the skirt incredibly short. And so if I had thought of that when I was making the skirt, I would have heightened the waistline of the skirt and not hemmed it as short. But I didn't know that. So I would have gone a little bit higher to more replicate that high waistline. I, I kind of just blanked out as far as thinking that maybe the bodice wasn't fit directly on the waistline, you know, higher. So anyway, I did that alteration and yes, I had to redo the piping along the bodice edge and I also had to trim down the boning and, but it really didn't take very much time. And in the end, I think I achieved a better bodice fit as far as replicating it compared to the movie. Slightly, can't be perfect, but anyway, after I made those bodice alterations, I realized I needed to now adjust the lace that I had already on the bodice because it was just proportionally incorrect now, of course. So I had to redo the lace. And again, alteration journey means that I usually don't film it because I just don't want to deal with it. After I did those two alterations, I could move on to do the rest of the bodice embellishments. 
So this project just involved a lot of hand sewing, just getting all the lace and netting in place with tiny little stitches to make it invisible as possible, but still securely on the bodice. After looking at it more, I realized that this piece really needed to go under this little section on the armhole based on some of these pictures here. And so I just took that section off and reattached it underneath that shoulder sleeve thing. And then here at the top area of the sleeve, I needed a little more room in the lace. And so I did a little piece working to get a little more room in that area. So yeah, this job was really just playing and manipulating the lace to achieve the look that I wanted. And then again, to minimize some stark edges to the lace, I decided to use the trimmed off section of the top of the lace and put it down below. The two stark solid lines of the lace are being sewn together and then that bottom edge of this lace will have a more loose look and not a stark end to the lace, if that makes sense. And now I'm bringing out a little bit different type of silk gauze. It's a little more sheer than the other silk gauze I was using, and I'm using it for these squiggly bits on the bodice. You'll see it up here in this picture. Now, you might notice it's way less stark, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, but if you look closely, it does look like it's a ribbon, a very sheer ribbon, but I did not have any of that ribbon, and so I tried to mimic that look with some silk gauze. Since this squiggly bit of silk gauze goes down into the V, I needed to cover up some of that blank space of the bodice, and so I just cut apart some different miscellaneous bits of the lace and got it sewn in that area. So again, pretty makeshift lace work job here. Here's where I came into a little bit of a discouragement design process failure and I don't know what other word to say. Basically, I got to the point where I was looking at the bodice and thinking, this is not right. It's not looking right, it doesn't look good, it's not my style, and it's just all wrong. I don't know if you ever get to that point in a project. I usually, well, something I've noticed about myself is when I'm in the midst of a project and you haven't quite finished everything yet, it's kind of easy to go, it's looking good and I know once this part, whatever, of the dress is on the dress, it'll look great. And you keep thinking that to yourself. And so when I was making the bodice, like with the lace, it's just gonna finish it all out. It's gonna be great. With the skirt, it was like, once those flowers are on, it's gonna be great. I kind of feel like I'm in this, well, once I add that, it's gonna make it better. And so I don't get as easily discouraged along the process. Because I'm thinking, well, once those everything comes together, it'll look good. But then you get to that point where you finally do add those finishing touches. You add the flowers, you add the lace, and you think that's what's going to bring it all together. And then it doesn't. It's pretty discouraging. So I was kind of at that point. I hadn't done the skirt yet. I was just working on the bodice. And I got to this point, well, the lace isn't making it look good. It's just, it's not there yet. It's just like, yeah, just that kind of face. But I think the main problem was my lace just isn't fine. It's pretty thick compared to the original. So the original is a silk bobbin lace and it's a very fine, loose weave. I don't think it's called a weave, a design to the lace. And my lace does not have that. It's pretty, it's pretty thick and chunky. So I was kind of like, this is just all wrong. And it was more white than I wanted. And the two laces just weren't meshing as quite as well as I wanted. So I got this, there's the lace and then there's the bodice. The lace really stands out on the bodice. 
and the sleeves and stuff. Whereas in the original dress, you it kind of just blends together. It's not stark lace on the top Bertha area. It's kind of, it just blends. And looking at my dress, it just, it didn't do that blending that I really wanted it to do. And so that's the point where I was kind of discouraged. And then I added that squiggly bit of silk gauze that was white and too frilly and it just not, ugh. it just had a lot of no factor to it. And I was pretty discouraged about that. But I didn't know what to do because I didn't have the ribbon look that I wanted to have because on the original dress, it looks like a ribbon that's pretty sheer. And so you don't really notice it very much, but it's there. And this silk piece was very much there. Like you notice it and it just, it's also very frilly and I'm not really a frilly person. And so it was a combination of all that. And I was just like, I, I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do and get you someone who knows you well enough to look at something and say, you know, you're not gonna be happy with that. You should redo that. Get someone like that. That's my mom. I was like, mom, what do you think about this? Because it's not looking good. And I kind of, in my frustration, just wanted to say, whatever, just move on, get this done with and stop worrying about it because I'm a perfectionist and I wanna get everything right. But it just wasn't happening. <laughs> And so I was like, maybe I should just need to move on and don't worry about it. But I showed it to mom and she was like, no, you, you should redo that. You're not going to be happy with it. it, it it's too stark. I was like, why did you have to confirm that? But in the end, she was right. And I'm very happy to have that someone who says, you're not going to be happy with that. You should redo it. And it's not in a negative that way at all, really. It can feel discouraging at some points, but she knows me and she knows me well enough that in the end, I would be very disappointed that I didn't redo it. And so she knows that I should do it now. And anyway, she was like, yes, you should redo it. And I'm like, no, but then I redid it and it all worked out and it looks way better. So thank you. I dyed a new piece of silk in some coffee because I like using coffee to dye. It kind of solves everything, coffee, so why not use it for dyeing? I got that dyed and the off-white color definitely looked way better than the white. And then when I got it placed on the bodice, I made sure it was fairly loose in my placement. It wasn't this really tight, swirly, frilly bit of trim. I really wanted to make sure it blended well with the bodice. And now we can apply the flowers to this bodice. And I did decide I wanted a little bit of leaf because you do see some of that in pictures of the original bodice. And so I just added a couple leaves and kind of randomly placed them around the flower. And now on to the skirt flowers. And yes, this one came in a vase that the flowers were glued into.
After seeing the skirt in form and the color, I realized some of my flowers were just too bright hot pink. They just didn't really blend well with the coral color. And so I decided that I would need to take them apart and reassemble them in a way that would help blend this bright pink with the other flowers and the dress. And I also decided that I needed to paint these bright pink flowers. Cause again, it was just even the blending with the light colors weren't giving the right color combination. And so I used some paints, got them mixed together and then painted the petals. Now, an interesting thing is I was able to just paint the backside of the flower petals and the paint slightly soaked in to the fabric and changed the upper side of the petal color. So it worked really well because you didn't get the paint streaks on the upper visible side of the petal. You just got the nice color change that the paint created. So it was really nice to not have that painted look, but still achieve a good color for these petals. Once I got these flowers disassembled and then painted, it was now time to reassemble them. And I am mixing these painted petals and the light petals flowers together to create some larger, varied petal flower things. And so I just kind of played around with the different layers and colors to achieve some even larger flowers. And now let's enter a little hot glue, which goes against pretty much every grain in my body to use hot glue on something, but it was unavoidable because I wanted to add this little centerpiece to the flower that I took out out of all the flowers that I disassembled. Now before I go on to the lower tier of flowers, I needed to create a ribbon for the lower section. Now I couldn't find a taffeta ribbon that was one, the right color and white enough and two had stripes in it. So I decided to create my own. I'm using the same silk taffeta that I created the dress out of and I am ironing on strips of a darker satin ribbon and so I'm using heat and bond to attach these thin ribbons to the taffeta and I created a nice thick wide perfectly colored ribbon. And now there's another little detail at that bottom tier of the flowers and it's a little bit of lace sticking out where the silk taffeta ribbon is. I found some lace in my lace stash and it wasn't quite wide enough and so I got two pieces zigzagged together and that worked perfectly for these little lace bits. And now there's one more flower to attach, and this is the flower that lays at the waist area of the bodice. It's just one flower, it almost looks like it's tied on with some ribbon. I couldn't find the perfect ribbon, but I grabbed some that kind of worked. So this ribbon I found was a wired ribbon, which wouldn't work. So I took the wire out, and then also it was a bright white. It did need to be a little more off-white. So again, I used some coffee to hopefully help darken the ribbon, 
It didn't work too well, but it did slightly take the bright white look away. To attach this rose and the ribbon, I decided I didn't want to permanently sew it to the bodice, just for ease of storage. And so I am creating a fairly large thread bar on the bodice, which I will just tie the ribbon and flower to. There's another little detail that I almost forgot about on this embellishment stage, and that's the little thing that is right off the bodice on the skirt. And so I just used some taffeta and created a little piece that I could sew onto the waistband to create this little decorative thing. I don't really know what to call it. I used some leftover scraps of the bodice lace, attached that, and then used some ribbon and played around with the placement to create a nice little area for some flowers to sit. After getting that finished, I just attached this little thing to the waistband of the skirt. And now we can finally gem this skirt. Now, these gems are super, super, super special because they are literally the same exact batch that was used on the original dress used in the movie. Yes, I'm not joking. The costume designer assistant, Richard Cook, I've been slightly in contact with him throughout this sewing journey, and he commented on an Instagram post, and that kind of started the conversation, but he had some leftover gems from working on the Phantom of the Opera movie, and he offered to sell them to me. And I got them. They are Swarovski crystals, and they are so perfect because, I mean, there's really no other way to describe it, because they were used on, well, not these same crystals, of course, but they're the same exact batch, style, size, everything that were used on the original dress. So super, super excited and so special to have that on this dress. I will point out they are hot fix crystals, which means the glue is already on the crystals and you use this little heat tool to melt the glue and attach them to your project. Now one, I don't have a hot fix tool to do this, and two, since I already have the skirt made, it would be very hard to get a flat surface for me to do the thing that you need to do with hot fix crystals. And so I am using my regular glue technique to attach these crystals. So technically there's double the glue on the crystals, but personally I don't think you can tell. And I'm just, I'm very comfortable using this gemming technique because I have applied thousands upon thousands upon thousands of crystals in my sewing career, I guess, because I have made five Cinderella ball gown replicas and they all had thousands of gems on each and I hand applied the gems to all of them.
So I'm sorry to do this to you, but that is all you're gonna get of the finished look. I'm kind of excited to show you guys the full finished look the proper way. So I have a really fun, beautiful shoot, photo shoot, video shoot planned, wearing the dress, all fancied up in the right accessories and setting and all that. So I want to give you guys the final look in that setting. So there will be a video coming out very soon. So stay tuned for that. Don't abandon us here because you need to see the finished look. I promise you, you will much prefer that look over in the sewing room dressed up. So just be patient, wait for that. But I hope you enjoyed this process. I can't believe the making of the dress is complete. This has been an incredible journey and it's been so wonderful having you guys along and it's not over. There's still videos to come in this series. The dress of course is finished, but there's all the accessories to make, the finished photo shoot, and then I'm gonna do a getting dressed video because as we saw with this video series, there's a lot of different areas to this dress. It's not just a dress, it's all the structure and undergarments. So those videos are coming, so be patient and I'm very excited about them. And then also remember I have some swag items listed on my shop, not through Teespring down below, it's on my shop. I have some more fun things listed on my shop. So if you wanna look at those, the listing should pop up and in the description below. But with any purchase of those swag items, you'll be helping this journey continue. And then on that same note, a huge thank you to the patrons who make these projects possible and will continue making them possible. And really, they're amazing. And if you wanna be a part of that, that should pop up and there's stuff in the description about it. But Patreon is making this journey possible and is making the next project possible, which guys, if you haven't heard it already, it's Cinderella's ball gown from the 2015 live action movie. This is my sixth replica of the Cinderella dress and I'm taking you all along with me. So that is the upcoming series on this channel. And with that, thank you guys for watching this series and let's continue on this series together for a few more videos and now go out into your own sewing area and learn, create, and inspire. <laughs>